Okay, welcome to another Ginge Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my IGCSE Paper 4 0607 predictions, which is for the Monday, the 14th of February, yes, Valentine's Day, and of course for Thursday, the 28th of April 2022 as well. Right, let's get started. So, we've got our so called topics of interest. These are topics that appear less than or equal to six in 13 papers. I'm going to highlight this one here, so direct inverse proportion. Venn diagrams, log circle theorems, and sequences. I want to talk about those very briefly before I move on to the often and almost certain topics. And one thing to take into account is look at the paper two that you have already done. So if these topics have not appeared on your paper two, they are far more likely to appear. So Venn diagrams, just a quick note here, usually linked with probability. So I'll ask you some set notation Venn diagram questions, and then it will drift into probability. So keep that in mind here. Logs, this can often be a sub question to a topic I will talk about a bit later on, on equation solving. Circle theorems will appear somewhere. So if it has not appeared on paper two, then it's going to appear on paper four in some way. And sequences, this will all depend on the paper six that will come up later on. So if a sequences question does appear, then a sequences question is less likely in that investigation paper. So just keep these things in mind, particularly with the star topics that you see in front of you. On to the often topics, and this is actually a fairly short section. Uh, the first one is coordinate geometry, which has always been a favourite on 0607. This is generally more frequent on paper two, so like a perpendicular bisector question, but has appeared you know, reasonably often on the paper four as well. Uh, be aware, a couple of times it's been combined with vectors, so they've given you some vector information to work out various coordinates and various gradients of lines. These are the key things you need to know here. So work out gradients, so know the formula or draw a sketch. Perpendicular bisectors, just like on the paper too. So be aware of how to do that. And also length of line segments. So when I say that, I basically mean be able to use Pythagoras on a line segment. And a typical kind of question is this one here. So I've taken it from sort of towards the end of a paper four, where in this case, they ask you to work out the coordinates of P using the ratio of lines. So this is obviously going to be an in-depth question on paper four, but just be aware of all the different kinds of ways they can ask this. Regression lines this is becoming more and more popular over the last couple of years. I did a video exactly on the technique that you need on your GDC to work this out. So please do check out that video above. And also here is a typical kind of question where I'll ask you from a set of data to work out a regression line and then some kind of interpretation. So I want you to substitute a number into your regression line to work out something else. This is becoming more and more often and it's a kind of free two, four marks that you really should be getting and could you know, make the difference between a B and an A or an A and A star. On to now the almost certain category. And you know, as I've said before in previous videos, it is almost certain. Look at transformations here, 12 in 13 papers. And you need to know the key transformations using tracing paper with some of these. So how to enlarge a shape, how to rotate a shape, how to reflect it, and how to translate it. If you do not know those words or how to describe one, then please do look them up. Do not forget stretches. Stretches are coming up more and more often, so be aware how to stretch a shape. And also enlargement, I thought I'd just notice this one as well, how to do a negative enlargement, so what that actually means. Be uh, aware that sometimes they'll ask these questions in a non-standard format. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, this kind of question here, where in this case, there is no graph to do a reflection or rotation, but they ask you how to go backwards, essentially. So this is kind of a, a backwards transformation question. So they've given you a reflection. How do you work backwards to that? So just be aware that some of these transformation questions can be kind of non-standard, where you have to describe it or without a graph to work with. So just be aware of that. I've seen that in a couple of papers. Statistics, which is always a big one, as you can see, 15 in 13 papers. And because histograms have now left the course, it makes it very, 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 very likely, notice the varies there, uh, that they're going to get a cumulative frequency curve in some way. So you need to know how to draw one and also how to interpret one as well. 
generally estimate of mean questions also pop in there as well and you can do this really really easily on your GDC again check the video you see just above you here and I go through all the statistical things you need to know for this course here's a sample question this is one where they give you the cumulative frequency graph and you need to work out in this case the median so for the median here you need to do half of 120 or strictly speaking 121 divided by 2 is 60 and then for this question all you need to do is read off the graph and then read off below so this kind of question very 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 common and again usually give you a range of answers to answer that question there on to GDC skills again as I say in very very big letters here the most important topic on the course it appears a whopping 17 in 13 papers so generally fluctuates between one question on paper four or sometimes even two questions on paper four the key skills you need is to find zeros maximum minima intersection points and work with inequalities the video above goes through those topics as well and I also go through a particular GDC question that I think will be really useful for you. Again, check out that video also above as well. And this is a typical question here where they get you to sketch. You need to know how to change your window settings and to use this to solve the equation. Again, I go through all that in the videos that you've seen above. Percentage calculations, again, a favorite of the course, also the 0580 course as well, usually at the start or the middle of the paper. So these are not usually the trickiest questions on the paper, uh, but you do need, need to know how to work out percentage change and repeated per, uh, percentage change. That's these two topics here, compound interest and depreciation. And to show you a question uh, on that, this is a very typical question, as you can see. Question three, so towards the start of the paper, where you need to work out some simple interest, so work out 2.5% of 5,000 times it by four added on or uh, working backwards in that kind of problem as well. So be aware how to work backwards and forwards through simple interest problems, compound interest problems, depreciation, and also work with some graphs as well. On to probability, which has been appearing more recently on paper two, but has always generally been a paper four topic. Okay, so keep that in mind. Almost always it's a tree diagram based question. So you can usually represent the situation either in the tree diagram that's given in the question or using Venn diagrams. I mentioned that earlier in the video. Again, if you want to know everything you need to know about probability, check the video above. I go through that. As you can see, 13 and 13 papers. It's a topic that you need to know. As you can see, this is a Venn diagram question here specifically, but this question four then leads into work out the probability of, for example, given the person likes sweets, um, find the probability they also like nuts as well. That kind of question does appear. And on to functions, which again is not quite certain. As you can see, 11 in 13 papers, but when it does come up, it's a huge question, absolutely huge. And it goes through very, very similar star questions. You need to find a composite function with and without numbers, work out the inverse of a function, uh, do some sort of equation solving with functions, and then a substitution star question as well. These are very, very similar every single year. So please make sure that you're happy with functions. So here we are, this is question 11. These tend to be all towards the end of a paper as well. As you can see, this is very, very typical. So you've got some substitution here for 11a, some equation solving for part b, and then an interesting algebraic fraction kind of question using functions. So that can also come up as well. So that's also something to be aware of. I go through a typical function question in the video that you see above. And on to trigonometry. So this combines the standard sine cosine rule bearings questions, which are very popular on this course, but also your general Sokotoa, so using right angle triangles to actually work out sides and angles. And as I've said here, it's also included with Pythagoras often. This is usually a pretty big geometry question in the exam. This is a typical starting point. These questions can fluctuate between the sort of middle and end of the paper where you're using bearings here to work out various angles and sides. So this question here, for example, to work at angle ABC, which is this angle here, 
you need to use the cosine rule. Now this cosine rule is not given on the formula sheet, so just be aware of that. So you've got b squared, uh, let's use the a squared plus b squared minus c squared over 2ab. This is the standard formula. You just need to know which is your a, b, and c. So this formula, I would recommend actually learning yourself because it's not given on the formula, rather than to rearrange the one that is given on the formula sheet. Again, whopping 14 in 13 papers. And on to a very big topic, 2D, 3D volume and surface area. And again, another geometry question. Can be tied in with the topic that we just mentioned here as well. Uh, can be also combined with similarity as well. So using similar triangles to work out angles and sides. This is a typical um, volume and surface area question here. This is a triangular prism in this case. And it asks you to work out the volume. And later on in this question, you get to work out the surface area. So the area of all the different sides of the shape as well. If there's two topics that you can really get a lot of marks on in this paper for, it's this one here and then the trigonometry that we just talked about as well. And on to equation solving. And this is quite a tricky one to describe to you because it can appear in a number of different ways. The most common is the classic quadratic equation derived from a situation. So they give you a speed distance time question, they give you a area of a particular 2D shape, and then it uh, emerges there is a quadratic to solve from that. Sometimes, however, as you can see towards the end, they just give you some equations to solve. And if I show you here, this is towards the end of the paper, they just ask you, solve this, solve this. So this also appears as well. This will also depend on what's appeared on the paper to earlier as well. So that's my predictions for the paper four. If you want to watch me go through a paper four from start to finish, then check out the video you see just in front of you here, because this goes through a paper four from start to finish and follow that playlist through.